Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at how we can do a fake version of a, uh, a Lomograph or a, a, a Lomo effect photo. Now normally um, real Lomo photographs are made on analog cameras and it's uh, a way of you know, bleeding light into the, um, onto the film. Um, so I appreciate this isn't a real way of doing um, Lomography or, or making a Lomo photograph. But um, you know, this is just a quick effect. There are already tutorials that show you how to do this on Photoshop, but just in case you're curious as to how to do this on the GIMP, um, I thought I'd offer you know, my version of a translation. So the first thing you're going to need is um, an image. Now usually images that work really well for Lomography are ones that have um, a lot of sky in them, um, and that will sort of become a bit more obvious as to why as I go through this. So I usually like to have an image that has a nice big blue sky in it and then something else as a kind of very interesting subject. So um, a fiberglass cow in a tree uh, in Melbourne's Docklands fits that criteria quite well. So the first thing we're going to need to do, and um, firstly the thing I always like to do is make a duplicate of the layer just so if I mess this one up too much I've got something I can fall back on. So to create a duplicate layer you just open your, um, your layers dialog if you don't have the layers dialog visible, you can either go to I had well, the quick way is just by pressing Control and L. Um, so if you don't have your layers, then you can just press Control and L, and they'll come up. Um, then you click on the layer that you want to duplicate, and then you press this little button down here, which uh, creates a duplicate layer. So that's this one here, and then we've got our background copy. So I'm just going to work on the background copy, and I'm going to leave the background as it is. Uh, in fact, I'll just make it invisible, so it's, I'm not tempted to use it for anything. And once we've got our copy that we're going to work on, the first thing we need to do is open up our curves. Now there's two, or, well there's three ways of getting to curves. If you've got it already set up in your toolbox, then you can just press on the curves tool um, button that's there. Um, but that's not enabled by default, so what most people would probably do is right click the image, go to colors, and then curves, or you can pick colors and curves from the menu bar at the top they will take you to the same dialog. The next thing you can do is um, we're not going to play around with the value channel but we're going to play with um, these three color channels so the first channel we'll play with is the red one and we're just going to um, make this um, S shape on uh, on the uh, curves. Uh, if you've seen my tutorial on how to Im improve night images or how to um, improve photographs in general using curves. Um, I've used this same shape um, with the value channel just to increase um, the contrast of an image. Um, so this is a, a similar um, a similar technique but it comes up with a different effect. Um, we do the same thing to the green channel. So again we just draw in this S shape on the curve. And then on the blue channel, we're going to do that, but in reverse. So we'll kind of do an inverted S. So we bring that up nice and high and that down nice and low. And you can see it gives us this kind of sea green look to the sky. Uh, and as the sky gets kind of whiter, as the sky gets lighter down here, you can see it washes out to this nice kind of pale uh, green, kind of almost yellowy kind of color. And um, which is, I think it's just beautiful in the sky, which is why I like to use sky images for this so often. Um, what you can do, if you find this a bit tedious and you don't want to keep on going through that every time you, you create a new Lomo effect, you can actually save that preset. Um, so these three values that we've just put into our curves, if we go to the plus button up here, you can add your settings to favorites. Um, and then when you just press plus, uh, you can just call it what you want. So save it as Lomo. And then when you go to your presets, you can see that um, your settings for Lomo have been saved. Now I've got Lomo number one there because I already have Lomo saved as a preset. Um, but yeah, so just to save you from having to go through that every time, um, you can just save the presets and always fall back on them. So we press OK and that gives us the look that we want. Um, once you've got this, that's not bad for a, a Lomo effect, um, but there's one more thing we can do just to kind of make it a bit stronger. Uh, we can start with adding a new layer, so we go to our layers doc and just press this blank page and that gives us a new layer and then we're going to set this new layer to overlay so we go to layer mode and click on overlay and you can see what that does for the moment um, the whiteness of it really washes out 
everything. Um, we don't want it to wash out everything, we just want it to wash out you know, a kind of gradient. So what we can do is if we pick our blend tool, which um, fills in a gradient on the image, and then you can select your gradient down here. So I've got a linear gradient, um, which is this shape, linear, and it, the gradient goes from black to white, or my foreground to my background. And I can change that if I flip my foreground and background colors. It now goes from white to black, so the foreground to the background. It doesn't really matter which way I do it. Um, and then as I draw a straight line, actually I'll just turn off this layer so you can just see what it does first. As I draw a straight line with that blend tool, um, it very simply draws black through all these shades of grey to white. And if I do it over here, um, it just goes from black to white, but this way. And you can draw a very small one, which gives you just a, a band of grey there, but mostly black, mostly white. Uh, you could do it this way. You know, you can play around with the way you want to do that. You can actually change the shape. So if you choose radial, um, you can, you know, get little curves in it, or you know, create circles that you know, go from gradients and wash out, things like that. Um, but basically the reason we're doing this is if you draw a curve kind of, uh, sorry, a, a gradient like this, and then we make this visible again, um, you can see the way it kind of gives us a, a much darker area before the whiteness washes out the rest of the lamography. So you can play around with this until you get an effect that you're really happy with. Um, I'd like to try and keep as much black in the sky as possible, but um, let the horizon wash out a little bit, you know, so you can get a nice kind of effect like that, or we could go a little bit further down for that. You know, so it gives us that nice blue, sea greeny kind of sky, and then completely washes out the horizon. Um, but you can go with this in any direction and just keep playing with it until you get an effect that you really like. Um, you know, and you know, you just play with that until you find what you want really. Um, but that's basically it. That's the, the easy way of doing a LOMO effect. Once you've got something that you're really happy with, you can just um, press Control and M, and that will merge all of the visible layers. Um, so Control and M for Moo Cow, or merge really. Uh, and then you've got your, your merged final image, and then you can save that as a JPEG and, and use it for whatever. Anyway, I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.